Hello and welcome to this special show. I am Tejas Mehta and coming to you from Goa where the humble coconut trees are the center of a huge controversy. Controversy because the Goa government has now allowed coconut trees to be cut without any permission. The protection has been removed. Not just that, people are upset because super laws are being created by the Goa government. But the BJP government says that's not the case. What they are doing is only in the interest of the environment and for the state of Goa. We'll start a debate very soon, but first, let's take a quick look at what these super laws really are. Goa has just got a new law. It's being called a super law. Super because it does two things. It supersedes and overrides any other land regulation in the state. And it's also super because it has the power to destroy all this lush green forest that covers 33% of Goa. So far these forests have been protected because Goa's forests are part of the Western Ghats, recognized as one of the world's major biodiversity hotspots. All that could be history. The new super law will allow these forests to be cut down for what's loosely described as eco-tourism activities. What's worse, the new bill removes the need for any permission to convert forest land for commercial purposes. Other than creating an area for elite and a lot of disturbance to animals and wildlife, there's nothing else that this is going to achieve. Many even question the legality of a super law. It's unconstitutional. You can't have a law, for example, for somebody who says, I'm going to put up 5,000 crores, so give me this plot and exempt me from all the laws. Because already we have this slew of draconian laws, which are actually taking away pieces of Goa and putting them into special zones under the control of lobbies. You can do nothing here, no development. Ironically, These Goa's forest minister, who is meant to watch over the environment, seems to be ready for encroachment into what's been so far no-go areas of Goa's forests. So, like this will be also possible in deeper in the forest, etc. It, if it is possible, we can do it. be open to that? Yes, I am I'm not ever to it. Okay. We will do this. If necessary, we will do it. However, because of the uproar against this super law, he told NDTV he promises a rethink. And as the two laws stand today, both the Town Planning Amendment and the uh, uh, Investment Promotion Board Act, the words like notwithstanding, which seems to overrule everything else, as far as let us will will clarify it. What is that? You are going to possibly could look into it again and definitely definitely if there is so if, if the point which you have brought in mm. i think certainly can be discussed with the concerned ministers also the hope the goa government now does an honest rethink because the western ghats is a world heritage site which has a very fragile ecosystem therefore all efforts must be made to ensure it remains protected with camera person suhas chaudhary and siddharth pandey in panji Tejas Mehta for NDTV. Let's straight away dive into the debate with uh, Claude Alvarez. Claude, do you think what the government has done is a sell-off for the state of Goa? I don't want to look at it in terms of, of sell-off, but what they have done is they have actually uh, tried to, with these new laws, very draconian laws, take away all the constitutional rights of people in villages and everywhere else. So they have said that they have brought in this new law for this investment promotion which says that all state statutory Goa laws will not apply. They will cease to exist. Wherever this board says that this will be an industrial promotion area, nothing else will apply. Now, I think this law is purely unconstitutional and it will not remain on the statute books. Respond to that, you're the MLA from the BJP. Why should a law overrule every other law, Siddharth? Because at the end of the day, the laws like town planning, regional planning, all these laws have to be applicable, but the investment promotion board is a super law, that's the allegation. We are looking at a world which is of 7 billion people. Today we have to realize the dreams of the youngsters and same time conserve our environment also. But to do this, we have to be pragmatic. We have to get in more industries and Goa needs clean industries. Inside eco-sensitive zones too? I'm sorry, you're mixing the two issues. 
the eco sensitive bill is very clear it says the activist acti i mean uh, activities permissible as per the eco sensitive zone uh, act are allowed and i have read through the eco sensitive zone act it says only temporary nature that means you can use wood or something like that to create tents or some activities revolving around that so that eco tourism is flourishing in this state dr astro bell please come in here because i mean the issue of goa's economy is very important and ever since mining has been stopped this has been the big debate space is sparse industry is not really coming in have the moves of the government really helped the state you think or it does come at the at the cost huge cost of the environment See frankly speaking Tejas I think there is this confrontation between the government and the people of Goa which is really not conducive to any solution I believe you must have environment and you must have economy nothing runs without the economy the solution to this would be for this government to actually finalize first the regional plan it's a very simple solution you mark out and demarcate which are the eco sensitive areas which are complete no go areas nothing can go there then you mark out areas which are earmarked for what kind of industries take the local population into confidence build up some kind of a consensus as to what kind of an industry should come there surely some kind of industry has to come whether it's universities whether it's the educational industry it industry whatever some industry to provide jobs otherwise you're having goans fleeing our land but you need to mark this out in such a way that investment is not hampered the environment is not hampered both the industrialist and the entrepreneur is happy the goan is happy and the environmentalist is happy but for this the government needs to be transparent thus far we have not seen this government fulfill any one of its promises from this manifesto the casino industry the drug trade the mafias the uh, you know getting back the the billions from the from the mining right. loot nothing has happened so why should we believe them when they bring in such a draconian law they are not able to regulate the existing laws so when you bring in such an a draconian law no one i'm sorry is going to believe and, and in most governments most governments uh, trust deficit between the people and uh, you know the government uh, is always there when the i mean do you think it is so draconian that uh, you know it is the, the point is being missed by politicians or you know are people getting unnecessarily fooled as the chief minister told me i think what is very important for me is that we need investment for sure but who that investment is benefiting because like i can tell you from my village of kolwal there there's industry that has come there we have not benefited at all the local goan has not benefited at all and i think the, these laws are not for the local goans these are for outsiders to come in invest in goa and take goa i'm surprised to know that they can what they consider a high investment is less than 1 million dollars uh, we are talking of 5 crores So five crores is for Not, me nothing. nothing. It's yeah. peanuts. I can understand. I'm if if you're trying to get into Singapore, you can get it, get in for seven crores, which is one million dollars, and get a visa. So what kind of uh, what kind of figures are these? Why are they there? Are they just meant to help hotels like the Four Seasons clear the coconut trees so that they can have a golf course? Do we need a golf course? Do we have enough water to sustain a golf course? Or we are not getting 24 hours a day water and power? I am running my factory in Goa on generators. I think it's despicable that investment is being made, uh, is being invited without infrastructure to start with. Mr. Prabhu, just I come in here because you are from Kerala. You are the president. I mean, the allegation is this has been done for the builders' lobby, for the developers' lobby. Uh, as, as Wendell was saying, I mean, uh, take him on on, on these arg arguments. Exactly. The the basic thing is that uh, any any development uh, uh, or any government comes out with anything uh, pertaining to the development, it automatically is pointed out that a builder is benefited. Are you happy absolutely. or not? Are you happy uh, or absolutely. not? Absolutely. I will come to the point that there are three aspects which I think we are discussing today. One is investment board. another is eco sensitive zone and another is coconut government might be having some good intentions of um, uh, coming out with the things like um, uh, investment development uh, is uh, boosting to uh, uh, about say the uh, internet uh, uh, what's economy. the economy or uh, entrepreneurs secondly eco sensitive zone what uh, i understand is that uh, what they were trying to do is that we have a rule uh, wildlife sanctuaries have been declared and within uh, one kilometer of the wildlife sanctuaries no development is uh, permissible but in goa what happens is that the rules and regulations have been formed way uh, away from goa somewhere in delhi they don't know the basic thing here what has happened is that in that 1 km zone there are people staying down there okay. so government so, might be intending to have that that to are you have one short answer are you happy with the investment promotion board 
Are you happy with that? It's a fast tracking of all projects. Correct, but the things have to be properly put before the people. There should not be any confusion, as Doctor said, that there should not be confusion. Government might be having intentions, good intentions, but today, even after eco sensitive zone, they have come with the amendment in the town planning act. Down planning act to the ultimately what has happened is that they could have finalized the regional plan in itself they could have finalized this eco sensitive zone and whatever development. But, but, but plot come in here because the Western Ghats are a heritage site. I mean even before the center has finalized on the MOAF draft notification of as to how development should to take place in the entire Western Ghats, the government has already decided that. That's the unusual part of the town planning amendment that they have done. The actual echo zone notification has still not come from the ministry. There's a draft, there's a draft notification, but the final so report. What do you read in that? What do, what do you read? I'm saying that even before the central government has notified, the Goa government is already getting ready to uh, allow people to come into these echo sensitive zones. It is not what he is saying that it is people who are living there. People who are living there, there's going to be no disturbance to them at all. You can continue your, your agriculture, your cottage industries, whatever you can do. There's no bar. It is not a no development zone. It says, but why are you suddenly making preparations and amending a law to allow people to which those, those who laws. own 20,000 square meters or above, not below, those who own 20,000 square meters above, which means very big landlords. So, so when you are in the opposition, he was somebody who worked, I mean, not for the opposition, of course, but against the government when the mining scam happened. I mean, he's somebody's voice the government should be really listening to. And he, of course, is going to meet the forest minister. But the point, larger point he's making, why are you making a law even before the centre has really no, centre has, has, has finalised on it? There are draft notification which has come out and it clearly specifies the activity. There is no ambiguity. See, it is the people of Goa have to come here and debate. Unfortunately, all of us are from the cities whom this law does not even take into account. I okay. live in the village. I am not living in the city. I'm sorry. Eco sensitive, zones, village, eco -sensitive zones are a matter of buffer zones around our sanctuaries. Okay. Okay. Now, ek, yeah. Uh, yeah, sure. We cannot mislead people. Okay. We have to be clear. No, no, there are two now, eco zones. One is under Western Ghats. This is very land, clear. And one no, is one cloud bar, cloud bar. This is very but, clear. These proposals have to be weighted by a committee which is con which is for the buffer zones around the sanctuaries. This is very clear. I have got to act here. We have to read the act. One sec, one sec. He wants to come in here. Yes. I have read the act in detail. I have been reading the act since a long time, since it was table uh, put forward in 2014. I just want to say that I live in a village and I've seen my village destroyed because of these stupid acts that come in. We have, we have been a very small village of 2,000 people. Now we balloon to 9,500. We have a satellite town of Mapsa, which we didn't need. We have a jail. We have an industrial unit, which we didn't need. In the process, we have reduced our green cover. And this Minister of Forest and Environment now, Mr. Arlika, says that he wa that Goa can do with a 33% a green cover. But when did places will ridiculous. develop? Places will develop. We can develop, but we have to develop in a po uh, in a very progressive international way. Okay. We, cannot, uh, we cannot develop at the cost of destruction hmm. where will tourism go i okay. mean we are we are not known as an industrial state okay. we are known as a tourism state okay let me let me get uh, uh, terence here terence george you have been researching on this entire thing do you agree with what uh, the mla is saying so that see i would just like to say if you take one example of the anjune panchayat which is the northernmost in goa it includes the mother wildlife sanctuary and it includes the eco sensitive zone of the mother wildlife sanctuary which is 1 kilometer there is also the protected forest mm. and there is the natural cover as per the regional plan. Mm. Also here there is one wetland which is the Anjuna Reservoir. So when we are talking about any activity coming in this eco-sensitive zone which is meant to be the shock absorber mm. for wildlife within the wildlife sanctuary, it has to be a transition zone from low protection to high protection. Mm. So when we are talking about any activity in this region, we need to look carefully at okay. the environmental impact, especially since ecotourism has not okay. yet under the EIA notification. Correct.